joining us for talking about what's new with QCTL and customize, and more importantly, how you can help and get involved. Uh, I'm joined by Ari Bushlu from Red Hat. Uh, this is visiting us from Turkey, which is super rad. Uh, my name is Jason Eskin. I'm from a company called Defensive Corns, and we are both the leads for Six CLI, which is the special interest group for command line tooling for the Kubernetes project. The Kubernetes project is divided up into different SIGs, uh, and we help lead the SIG for CLI tooling. So, uh, more about that in a second. Uh, we kind of want to talk through some of the recent releases we've had, some of the cool features that we've shipped out, and we want to save a ton of time at the end for questions and discussion. So get your thoughts and questions ready, and uh, yeah, hopefully this is rad. So 1.30 shipped uh, two releases ago, uh, and we landed a couple of cool changes. Aggregate discovery was awesome. Uh, this is how, when your uh, client first talks to the cluster, it basically has to uh, enumerate all the resources on the cluster, uh, which makes a ton of round trip API requests to find out that all the API versions, all the CRDs that are there. And it kind of like repopulates the cache of this. Uh, before it was uh, not as efficient as it could have been. We did had uh, cache validation that kind of expired after an hour or so, um, and we invalidated the cache every hour on the dot. And so I think it's never made it so that when you were using larger uh, amounts of CRDs, like with crossplane or something, uh, it was brute forcing and DDoSing the API server and taking it down. So aggregate discovery made that way better, and hopefully when you first talk to a new cluster, it's a lot faster than it was. So shout out to Jeff for that. Uh, Kube Control Interactive Delete was shipped by Arda here. This was a very long standing pain point for me, uh, which uh, if you ever deleted something by accident, this feature is built for you. Uh, fun fact, when you delete a namespace, you delete everything in the namespace. When you accidentally do a dash dash all and delete all namespaces, you have worked your cluster. Uh, so now with uh, Kube Control Delete, with a dash I on there, you can opt into interactive delete. Uh, Art is going to show a way how you can make this the, the default in the background. But uh, yeah, start throwing dash I on there when you're deleting resources and kind of get in the habit of it. And um, the cool stuff Art is working on will make this the default soon. So, uh, no longer, hopefully, breaking your stuff accidentally. Uh, 1.30 brought a pretty big change to beta. Uh, Speedy, anyone familiar with what Speedy is? Speedy existed before HTTP2 was a spec, uh, and all Kubernetes streaming services, so port forward, exec, uh, any sort of like, you know, uh, communication with the, the client back and forth, goes over Speedy, which has been long since deprecated after HTTP2 was finalized. Uh, and so we are transitioning from Speedy to WebSockets as a default in the cluster. Hopefully this is no change to you, but we run into a lot of protocol issues with Speedy uh, when doing things like, if anyone's had a port forward die under the hood, uh, that's related to this. So hopefully things get a lot better for you soon. Uh, and I think this will make stable in hopefully 133. 133, I think. So a uh, big shout out to Sean who worked on that for a long time. Uh, 132, which came out recently, uh, brought some two cool changes. Uh, there's an alpha feature which you can learn more about if you want to separate standard, uh, standard error and standard out logs from the API server. Um, this is uh, the release that's being worked on now. Uh, it should land the latest year. Uh, so that's a really cool one. You're able to opt into at the API level. You can find out you know, if you just want the standard error logs, you can get those out of the container. Uh, and then you control the bug profiles, which is another one shipped by Arda. Uh, this added the ability that you can set some um, special profiles for different uh, flags and stuff you need for debugging. Uh, quick shout out to Crew. Uh, anyone used Crew before? The Q Control Plugin Manager. Uh, they've shipped a ton of plugins over the past couple of years. Uh, growth has been great, so if you haven't made a plugin, it's kind of super easy to get started with shipping Crew plugins. Uh, so check that out. Uh, really cool quote here from Ahmed, who's one of the maintainers for Crew. Over half of plugins will automatically release from tagging your release to being available on Crew with no humans in the loop, which I think is super rad, especially for a supply chain standpoint. But uh, they're trying to automate this for all the plugins to kind of take down the maintainer burden there. Uh, quick plug for customize. There is a draft uh, cap. Uh, all these we call these caps in the Kubernetes enhancement proposal. So these are how changes happen in the Kubernetes project. So customize is a cap that's open to add WASM plugins for KRM functions. 
which is really sweet. Um, I think most of the code work is done through the Prusa concept, actually. You can, you can go and you can just compile your code with like go n equals wazi or whatever it is. Uh, so check out the draft proposal if you're interested in that. But uh, KRM functions are a way that you can add a, another plugin to like the pipeline of your, your customized processing pipeline. So uh, really cool work done out there by you go. And with that, I'm going to talk about QRC. Hello. Um, before jumping into QRC, uh, I would like to highlight that the uh, work done by the chance in the transition of speed into web circuits, because changing the underlying protocol without uh, any breakages uh, is an impressive example of uh, how the work can be done in a backwards compatible way. Now, uh, backwards compatibility is one of the key aspects in queue control. Users should have a uh, confidence that after the upgrade, queue control will just work as is, or at least require some simple intervention. So, but this comes with the drawback that as a main thing, we are inflexible to make some behavioral changes in queue control. Take an example of queue control apply. If you use client side apply by default, uh, we are aware that it has some limitations. And when someone files an issue about a missing or duplicate entry, we usually recommend to use the server side apply by uh, passing this flag every time. We can know that there are hundreds of scripts running on the production relying on some hidden behaviors of the client side apply. And we cannot change this behavior because it is very likely that some of these scripts will start failing, even if we carefully manage this transition. So, as maintainers, on the other hand, we are also aware that we need to provide a solution to mitigate the problem in a natural way. So, we decided to provide a little configuration file named QMRC, which is similar to QConfig, but more it is targeted to preferences. It, its default directory location will be same with QConfig. And it's just like QConfig, you can customize the path by passing flag or an environment variable. Now, this is a typical example of how QMRC file will file. Now, when uh, thank you. This one, good example. But other ones is also a good example, but this one I'd like to talk about now. Now, um, when Cube Control in every Cube Control's invocation, Cube Control checks the existence of the preference file. And it, it finds the kubrc file. It first overrides the default behaviors in, with, in the, with the given flags in here. I am emphasizing the default behaviors because um, we are focusing on the def default behaviors. If user explicitly specifies some uh, value on the terminal different than the one in the kubrc file, this will be used and the kubrc file will be ignored. For example, uh, if uh, I execute kube control apply and kube control will set the uh, server side true and validate strict in this case. And there is no need to pass every time a flag such as server side apply every time over and over again because it is tedious. Now another nice functionality that kubrc provides is aliases. It is more than just giving an alias name to a command. It uh, works like a command templates. You determine your static, uh, ta static, you determine the parts that are static and you represent them in this uh, QRC file and you just need to pass to the dynamic parts on the terminal. And kube control will expand it in a longer valid form. Now, walk through the fields in the aliases. Uh, alias name cannot be uh, cannot overlap with a command name. 
uh, and cannot include any special characters. For example, uh, analyze. Command uh, should be the built-in commands, but this includes subcommands as well. For example, I can edit here, create user, or create user role, etc. Flex is the similar mechanism, just like actually share the same mechanism with the override flex. It just sets the default values of the builder flex, and if user specifies a different value on terminal, it will be used, and the one in here will be ignored. Now, uh, arguments are the arbitrary fields in kube control. A good example of an argument is resource names. It's just an arbitrary field that you are passing and expecting to be validated in the API server. Conventionally, resource names are just added after the command name. What just conventionally? And prepend arguments can be used for these use cases. For example, if I have a mission critical pod and I want to run different kind of scripts against the same mission critical pod, I can add this mission critical pod into the prepend arcs. And as you can see in the right hand side, first one, you just run the kube, kube control analyze and the script you want to run. And it will be expanded to a longer, well known form of kube control. Append arcs is used to append everything at the end of the values of given on the terminal. In that case, for example, I have an in-house tooling script uh, implemented in my company, and I want to run different kinds of scripts. I want to run these scripts against different kinds of resources, and this is an example of, for example, kube control inspect pod one, pod two, and you are running the same script over and over. Now, this feature will be available in 1.33 as an alpha, which means that if you want to use this functionality, you have to enable it by exporting this environment variable. And of course, we are planning to add a new command line to easily prepare this kubeconf kubrc file instead of manually generating it, or we were planning to add a, some uh, new environment variable to disable it, to fall back to the original behaviors defined in the kube control. And you are very welcome. Any feedback, any bugs, any missing pieces that are not covered yet, but still increase the usability. And thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Arda. I have been wanting this to, to get shipped for a very long time, and I'm very thankful for Arda for working on it and pushing over the finish line. And we just missed the cutoff for 132, so it's absolutely going to land in 133. Uh, this came out of the, a, a lot of burning desire for that, that specifically that delete issue, right? We have people open issues on, on Cube Control's issue tracker all the time about, hey, I accidentally bricked my cluster by deleting all the namespaces. It was too easy for me to make this mistake. Uh, and I think that's kind of where we are as a, a project is we don't want to break people and we want to push things forward. And the problem is when we have people's pipelines that have been running for years and years, we can't change the default behavior of delete to start asking if you want to confirm, right? So thankfully with kubrc, uh, you're able to, to set these defaults like you want. Uh, you could, if you have like a jammed MacBook, if, you, if you're like a, you know, a system administrator for your team, you could push out a kubrc for your entire team to provision it, put it there in the first place to opt everyone into delete confirmation for everything. Uh, we can get more granular as we go. So I am so stoked to, to get this to land. A uh, couple of other future things that we have been thinking about and talking through. Uh, multiple cube config support. Uh, this is something that definitely lots of folks have asked for and really thought about. Uh, we don't know how to do this the right way. Uh, we have thoughts. We have things that we can try and experiment with. But if you have strong opinions or ideas on how you want to work with multiple cube configs, come talk to us. Uh, either find us here, find us afterwards, come to our meetings. We'll share the meetings at the end. Uh, another one we're looking for is a new version of server-side apply that is um, 
server, uh, of apply that is server side by default. We went through a process of we couldn't change the default of server side apply because it would break a pipeline because people are expecting one behavior, right? So um, thankfully with QRC, you can opt into the default for that, but we're also thinking of ways that maybe we want to rethink what the apply command actually does. Uh, JSON path, uh, fun fact, the JSON path spec is very, very small. All the utility functions that most people think about, like length, aren't actually part of the JSON path spec. Uh, JSON path spec. Uh, and so we do not implement them in kube control. And so that causes a lot of friction for folks who are used to using JSON path and other tools that add those helper functions. Uh, we just have a bare bones spec implementation. Uh, and so we're thinking about ways we can add things, maybe like cell, the common expression language that Google's worked on, it's pretty great. Uh, maybe some other stuff in there to kind of augment our JSON path. Uh, CRI native copy is another cap that we're hoping to start working on for 133. Uh, this will get rid of the requirement to have tar as part of your container if you ever want to use copy, which I think is super rad. We're going to hopefully build this directly into the container runtime interface. So it'll be a first class API. Uh, and another thing, if you've ever opened an issue or a feature request to add a flag and we've said no, it's nothing personal. Uh, if you ever look at the help page for kube control, it is massive, massive, massive and keeps growing. So we're getting very, very protective and strict about like what flags we actually want to introduce, especially single letter flags. Those are very, very hard for us to ever change or walk back. So. Uh, Last but not least, we have our meetings. Uh, if you would like to join us, please do. You don't have to register. You don't have to sign up. You can just kind of show up. Uh, if there's something that you want to add to our agenda, it is open. You just have to join our mailing list at the bottom there, and you have right access to our agenda. So you can propose something on the agenda. Uh, so every other week, we have a SIG meeting where we talk through stuff. And then alternatively, we have bug scrubs. So we walk through our backlog. We kind of talk through issues, triage them. Uh, I think kubectl probably sees at least 100 issues open a month now on our repos. So uh, great meeting to come help us uh, get through that. Join us on Slack. Uh, and this QR code, I think, is a um, survey. You can fill out the survey. This helps us a ton to keep these maintainer sessions where we get to keep doing them. So please review the session. Uh, and with that, we got a bunch of time for questions and discussion. We got a mic in the middle of the room for the recording. Uh, anyone who has things they want to talk about, bring up. Like, this is the perfect time. This can be super informal, too. Uh, we really want to hear from y'all what you're all struggling with, what you want improved, what stinks. Uh, and we want to make Cube Control better for everyone. So, awesome. Yeah, I have a quick question regarding the support for multiple Cube Configs. Like, is it not working right now? Or what, what exactly is the problem with it? Yeah, it's exporting the environment variable to do it or using the flag is great. But when people want to pair a lot of different things with like different contexts or different clusters and different users, it's kind of a really cumbersome process now. I know a lot of people that do like bash scripts to like wrap their environment to kind of set those up. So we're really, maybe multiple cube configs isn't the best word there, but working with multiple clusters and environments is really what we're trying to think through and solve. Uh, you know, if you have your staging environment, you have your production, right, different data centers, different regions, AZs, whatever. Um, how do you want to work with that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we have that same challenge right now, and the way we solved it with, is with uh, bash hacking. So we have, like, several cube config files. Each file has like one cluster, and then uh, you know we export all of the cube configs together. So we use like find everything under the cube config, um, and then you know they're all exported into the same cube config environment variable. If that makes sense. Um, so that's how we do it. I don't know if it helps anyone. Yeah. We've got a lot of feedback that people think that's really clunky. It uh, is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, so we're glad that there's. I think one of the stances we usually take is if there's an easy bash way to do something, we tend not to add the maintainer burden of supporting new code or features. Uh, this is one where we've got to the point where enough people have complained about it and said it's a bad experience that we want to figure out a way to make that better. So. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I drop a comment about this? Uh, now, uh, I am seeing hot topic as a multi clusters, and I believe that uh, we need to, it will be more and more required functionality. I haven't checked it yet, but uh, thank you. Thank you. There was an issue for 122 that was proposed for potentially removing customize from kubectl. 
Uh, can we not make that happen? You want to take that or me? Uh, there was an ongoing, uh, there is a cap to take the customized apart from cube control. Yeah. Yeah. The and now, yes, we are getting some complaints about it and still ongoing discussions. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the issue there is Customize has a ton of dependencies on all sorts of stuff, and that's been polluting the global Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a monorepo. Uh, Customize is out of the monorepo. And so pulling Customize into Cube Control has brought a bunch of other dependencies in, and it's become a real pain to upgrade the version of dependencies and Customize in Cube Control. And so I'm not sure if we're going to go through with that proposal, but that's kind of where it's coming from, is it's adding a ton of maintainer burden. And so I think the ask is going to be out there for folks who really find value in it, send us a person to contribute and make that better for us. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, this might make my question a little awkward then, because um, we, <laughs> I'm in an environment where they approve the cube control CLI, but not the customized CLI. And so we rely on the customized build being part of it. My question was going to be if there was ever any possibility of getting the additional uh, commands like edit fix or edit set pulled in. But maybe that's a moot question now that. Yeah. These the. Are. I wish Mache were here. He's, they unfortunately gave us a overlapping talk with one of our other co-leads uh, who is giving another talk right now. Uh, he's been the one driving a lot of that. Um, I'm sure we can find him afterwards to kind of dig into that a bit more. But I, I know a lot of the stuff that was pulled out to be plugins, um, it was mostly for maintainer burden. And so the same kind of ask. Like if people really find these features valuable, send us a person to help do the work to keep those things in tree, uh, in tree being as part of the main thing. Um, and I think we're very happy to do it. I think we just weren't able to find anyone to help us do the work there. So. Thank you. Didn't you face any issue about uh, customizing the cube controls version is older than the actual customized because someone need to also update the version in customize in the cube control. Uh, for example, if you would additionally install the plugin as a plugin customize, you will always get the latest and correct version. This is a, another problem that we are trying to also solve by taking apart this customize from the cube control. We have not run into that issue personally, so. You just used a built-in one then, I assume, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I think what a lot of folks wind up happening is they're using the external one as well in development, and it has a different version than what's bundled with, because cube control can only release alongside Kubernetes, so we get three releases a year. Customize can release as quickly as they want. Um, and so you get this version drift where there's incompatibility, and that's been kind of a pain point too. Yeah, yeah. we've just been using the one that was built in for gotcha. building everything, but then in the transition from V4 to V5, we've had to pull the actual customized CLI to do like the edit fix to do the upgrades. Okay, yeah, let's talk more. We'll find Mache. <laughs> So I'm coming from an ADHD kind of perspective, frankly, uh, where the output from kubectl comes with so much output, it's hard to see stuff. I always use uh, kubecolor. And I wonder if there's, if there's a plan to integrate it into uh, kubectl that we can get a colorized output to... Um, can I, I, there's, uh, even two, there's even two versions of the kubectl uh, color wrapper. Now, uh, kubectl is when we first... Uh, conceptualized QRC. Coloring is the, another uh, good uh, functionality that QRC can provide. For example, if you add coloring uh, in QRC file, it will just color. Otherwise, uh, changing the default behavior, adding coloring uh, might Yeah, we, I thought we had a cap. We definitely have a long-standing pinned issue, um, and it's been a the ANSI color scapes that are required also breaks pipelines, uh, right. which everything breaks yeah. pipelines. And QRC hopefully makes it so that we can add it so you don't have to dash dash color every time you want to do it. 
And so yes, hopefully. I think I think we want to move towards that as a thing you can opt into. Right. Yeah. yeah 100%. For, for example, QRC, there will be some kind of a recommended uh, flag. For example, server site apply, interactive delete, and coloring is the third one that is very likely put into recommendations of QRC. Okay, here's the one to follow. Uh, 524, and if you want to help work on it, absolutely join us, we'd love it. <laughs> yep. Hey, uh, an underappreciated feature of Customize is the helm inflator, and I was kind of curious what the status of it was because it feels like that's been in a long-term plan for a few years now in terms of making it a KRM function. There doesn't seem to be much traction or movement. Is it just waiting for contributors? Yes. Um, the original Helm maintainer was unfortunately laid off last year and then decided to go back to school. Uh, and so Helm has a new maintainer, uh, Hugo, who's awesome. Um, and he is trying to move things along. So show up to the, the meetings and see what you can get involved with there. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it comes down to a person issue. I think there was a lot planned with like the KRM functions like um, there was a whole sub project that got spun up of it. It was like a combined effort between Apple, Shopify, and Microsoft. And I think all the people who were working on it got moved around or laid off. And it was just unfortunate. So have your employers fund open source maintainers. Yeah, it's Red Hat, so I'll bug them. Ah, Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> we still got about six minutes left. If other folks have questions or thoughts, want to throw tomatoes. I do have a question about customize. Um, so for replacements, and I know like var is deprecated, um, they, you can specify like a single value or in case of replacements, a single field, and have that be replicated to multiple places within your, um, within your, your uh, uh, manifest files. Um, is there any push to do the same thing with patch? I know it's an older feature, but instead of having to repeat values over and over again when they need to go into like different places within your manifests? Do you have thoughts? Neither Arter and I use customize very often. Okay. Uh, I unfortunately don't have the answer for you. Mache might, we can go find him later if you're around. Um, other than that, you, if you join the Kubernetes Slack, you can join the 6CLI channel and Cobalt with the one in for the L uh, is the maintainer. He's super active or yeah, he's a great person to either ping in the channel or DM. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. If you can't tell, we, we need maintainers for everything. So send us people, come join us. I actually was just wondering if SIG CLI was responsible for uh, the kube config file or if that was a different SIG. Um, it depends <laughs> because most of the code uh, lies in the client go which is uh, API machinery is responsible for, but um, there are some smaller pieces uh, in the kube control side, but it is uh, very high probability that if there is any change, it will be in the client code side. Thank yeah, you. the so kube config is a very interesting, and we just talked to Jordan, who's one of the tech leads for the Kubernetes project about this, and it's an unversioned, API that is completely treated separately from every other API in Kubernetes because it was built so early, like the client was the first thing you build, right, to talk to the API server. Um, and it's unversioned and it doesn't really have an owner, like artist said. Like it's kind of a mix between us and client go, which is API machinery. Um, we've talked about maybe trying to version it, and it was probably not worth the effort and breaking people and the awareness campaign we'd have to do about it. Um, but great question. It's one of those things where we, we just, our hands yes. are kind of tied. Yeah. And just to clarify kind of why I asked, thank you for the answer. Um, I've got some authentication work that I've been working on, and uh, so it uses the client go call out to the authentication program. And so this works great for kubectl, and I get pushback from Go developers saying, hey, I want to you know, uh, link a library. I want a library I can pull into my Go application. Um, and then I point out, cool, and you're going to recompile that for every cloud out there and everyone's authentication. And so it's very core kind of to the extensibility of authentication in Kubernetes, and yeah. I haven't found a good answer on that. The, have you found the client config plugins and APIs help or no? 
Uh, in fact, I appreciate it. I found a nice GitHub project from somebody who goes by int128, if I remember right, that did OIDC nicely, nice. uh, Coop login. So it worked fine for us. Uh, mm -hmm. We have an in-house tool for uh, an authentication system we have that also uses that API. So it works well. It's just pushback on calling the CLI. Totally. Yeah, that's, so this is the, I just pulled up, this is the actual API for the kubeconfig. 2014 is when this file was wrote, uh, and it hasn't changed very much since then. Uh, there's, fun fact, there's actually a ton of fields in here that y'all probably don't even know exist. Uh, there's like a whole preferences section. There's a colors field as part of it uh, that doesn't actually do anything, but again, it's, it exists and we can't remove it to break things. Um, yeah, this is a very unique case in, in Kubernetes. There's some lore for you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> cool. Well, with that, uh, thanks for joining us. Hopefully this is Thank interesting. You. If you're interested in contributing, please come check us out. Uh, we're also doing the SIGs, meet the SIG session. It's either, it's probably tomorrow. That's a great way to, all the Kubernetes special interest groups are gonna be there. You, so you can find different parts of the project you might be interested in. Um, and if you need help convincing your employer about why you should get to work on open source and contribute back, I'm always happy to talk about that. But yeah, thanks again, y'all.